When you begin to analyze your data, you will have a number of windows open at the same time. You may find this idea is confusing. Once you get the hang of it, it is really quite simple. You will always have the data editor open because this is contains the data file that you are analyzing. Once you started to do some analysis, you will have the viewer window open because this is where the results of your data analysis are displayed listed in the order in which you perform them. Um, the different windows are like pieces of paper on your desk. You can shuffle them around so that sometimes one is on top of another. Each of the windows you have open will be listed along the bottom of your screen. To change windows, just click on whichever windows you would like to have on top. You can also click on window on the top menu bar. This will list all the open windows and allow you to choose which you would like to display on the screen. Let's close these windows for now, except the data editor window. Before you can enter your data, you need to tell SPSS about your variable names and coding instructions. This is called defining the variables. You will do this in the data editor window. The data editor window consists of two different views, data view and variable view. You can move between these two views using the little tabs on the bottom left hand side of the screen. You will notice that in data view window, each of the columns is labeled var. This will be replaced with the variable names that you will create. Down the side, you will see numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on. These are the case numbers that SPSS assigns to each of your lines of data. These are not the same as uh, your ID numbers, and these case numbers change if you sort your file or split your file to analyze subsets of your data. To define each of the variables that make up your data file, you first need to click on the variable view tab at the bottom left of your screen. In this view, the variables are listed down the side with their characteristics listed along the top name, type, width, decimal, labels, and so on. Your job now is to define each of your variables uh, by specifying the required information for each variable listed in your code book. In the name column, type in the brief variable name that will be used to identify each of the variable in the data file. Let's type ID for the first variable, the second one gender, third one age, the fourth variable uh, GCS for uh, Glasgow Comma Scale. Keep these variables' names as short as possible, not exceeding 64 characters. Each variable name must be unique, must start with a letter, uh, and cannot contain spaces or symbols. For type, the default value for type that will appear automatically as you enter your first variable name is numeric. For most variables, this is all you will need to use. To change the variable type, click in the cell and a box with three dots should appear, giving you the options available. There are some circumstances where other options may be appreciated. For example, if you need to enter text information, uh, for example, a person's sure name, you need to change the type to string. A date option is also available if your data includes dates. But for now, we will make it uh, just numeric. You can also use this window to adjust width. I will teach you another way to adjust the width of the variable and the number of decimal places. Let's close that for now. For uh, the default value for width is 8. This is usually sufficient for most data. If your variable has very large values or you have requested a string variable, you may need it to change these default values, otherwise leave it as is. The default value for decimals is usually 2. However, you can change 
this using edit options then click data tabs then change the decimal places I'll make it uh, zero if your variable has decimal places, change this to suit your needs. So in ID and age, I don't need decimal places, also in gender and in GCS as well. The label columns allows you to provide a longer description for your variable than used in the name columns. This will be used in the output generated from the analysis conducted by SPSS. Let's label these variables ID, I'll make it um, case ID, gender, okay, I leave it as it is, gender, also age, GCS, I'll make it Glasgow comma scale. In the values column, you can define the meaning of the values you have used to code your variable. I'll demonstrate this process for the variable gender. Click on three dots on the right hand side of the cell. This opens the value label dialog box. Click on the box market value, type in one. Click on the box market label, type in male, then add. You will then see the summary box one equal male. Repeat for female, value, enter 2, label, enter uh, female, add. When you have finished defining all the possible values, click OK. As we said before, male and female is a type of data called categorical nominal data, as it has no unit of measurement and can't be ordered in a meaningful way. So. The number 1, which assigned to male, and the number 2, which assigned to female, is not a real number. It makes it easy for the computer to deal with numbers rather than strings. Okay, what about the column headings missing? Sometimes researchers assign specific values to indicate missing values for their data. It is not essential. SPSS will recognize any blank cell as missing data. So, if you intend to leave a blank when a piece of information is not available, it is not necessary to do anything with this variable view columns. If you don't intend to use specific missing values code, 99 for not applicable or not tested, you must specify this value in missing section. Otherwise, SPSS will use the value as legitimate value in any statistical analysis. Click on the cell and then on the shaded box with the three dots. Choose the option Discrete Missing Values and type the value, for example, 99 in the space provided. Up to three values can be specified and then click OK. Columns. The default column weight is usually set at 8, which is sufficient for most variables. Change it only if necessary to accommodate your values or long variable names. You can change column width also from data view. Okay. The alignment of column is usually set at right alignment. There is no need to change this. Um, the column heading measure refers to the level of measurement of each of your variables. The default is a scale, which refers to continuous data measured at interval, discrete, or ratio, continuous level of measurements. So, scale includes both types of metric data, whether it is discrete or continuous. Uh, if your variable consists of categories as uh, gender, click in the cell and then on the arrow key that appears, choose nominal for this categorical data. Um, choose ordinal data if your data involve ranking or ordered values as in uh, Glasgow comma scale variable. 